Welcome back to Dave's Gone By on AM 1240 WGBB Freeport and live streaming on the web at AM 1240 WGBB.com. And I'd love to tell you a bit more about our guest today, our musical guest. I know that he's from Canada, but when I went to do some more research on him about his bio and stuff, I went to his website and there was nothing informative on there at all. And there was another bio on another website, and all it said was about his album. So all I have is the music to go on. And I have two CDs, at least, to go on now. One is called A Battery of Tests, and then there's another double EP called Late Bloomer. And I'm talking about the Canadian singer-songwriter Rob Zabo. Rob, welcome to Dave's Gone By. Who the hell are you? Dave, thanks so much for having me, and my apologies about the website. My server is down and... Oh. Those responsible have been fired. Yeah, blame the server. Uh huh. Uh, so, yeah, like, like Ashley Simpson is blaming uh, her <laughs> band. I'm sorry. Uh, um, yeah, we're in the in the process of loading up the new site, and so like what happened was there were problems. Okay. So, anyway, so who am I? Yeah. I'm uh, from Toronto. I'm a singer songwriter. I've been playing in bars and clubs and festivals and busking and doing whatever it takes to make a living and survive for like. I don't know, 11, 12 years, yeah. and uh, it's like touring around Canada. This is my first da- time down in the States. So, well, yeah, um, first time ever as, as a performer? Just as a performer, no, I've been to the States before. Actually, one of my old bands 10 years ago came down and played in the States a bit, but never sort of systematically, Got it. Well, like what I plan to do. So where have you been playing in, uh, like, state to state, or, or just... Well, right now, I just, just yeah. in New York area, like, I played in... Uh, Farmingdale mm-hmm. and in Manhattan last night. I'm going to Connecticut tomorrow. So yeah, cool. And how would you describe? I mean, I assume you're folk based, but mm-hmm. you have a little bit of the pop influence. How would you describe your music? Um, it's like brainy pop or something. I don't know what to call it. I mean, you really got to listen to it. The new album is like acoustic one side, electric the other. So uh, that's late bloomer, right? That's on late bloomer, sore loser is what it's called. So the late bloomer is the electric side, sore loser is the acoustic side. Yeah, kind of, I think Richard Thompson did something like that a few years ago with yeah. the album he did. Yeah, Neil Young's famous for doing that kind of thing. Right. right. Yeah. So on the Rust Never Sleep stuff. Yeah, um, exactly. Yeah. Yeah. So, okay, the usual question then. You decided to become a musician when, what, how, why? It wasn't a decision. I had no choice. If I'd been able to choose, I probably wouldn't be doing this. Right. Are you doing it full time, by the way? Oh, absolutely. It's been, like I said, 11, 12 years. So, yeah. And influences, I mean, you mentioned Neil Young, but... Um, yeah. Um, I, I love all kinds of different music. This is this is a funny thing that I always get into talking with people about, and that's like you look back to the 70s and 60s, and, and people's tastes were quite eclectic. And on one record, for instance, take a Led Zeppelin or a Beatles record, on that record they would have the heaviest music available at the time, that stuff that your parents would hate, and they would have beautiful, heartfelt ballads. And music these days doesn't seem to have that kind of scope it's very narrowly target marketed and that's what I'm trying to get away from I'm, I'm trying to get you know uh, on my records that, that's specifically what I'm talking about is being able to have like a, a heavier darker side but also a more you know easy to listen to side mm-hmm. how do you go from being you playing in like a 10 seat club with 5 seats filled right. to getting your name out there and know, people knowing who you are and trying to make a living Doing this. What makes you think only five seats would be filled, eh? Not, not, <laughs> now, not now, maybe, but no, no, I don't know. I'm just, yeah. I'm just kidding. No, but no, now, now maybe fifty or a hundred or, or two hundred. No, seats I've, been, I've been through that whole, that whole uh, process with different bands. Like I said, this, these are two of my, these are my two solo CDs that I'm gesturing to on yeah. the radio. Right. <laughs> But I've done eight CDs. I've played numerous other bands. Oh, wow. I've you know, had record deals in Canada, gone through the whole, you know, made videos, toured the country, been on TV, on radio, on everything. And this is a roundabout way of answering your question. Yeah, no, My good. plan yeah. is cutting out the middleman. I play, I go wherever I, I want to solo, and I meet people, and they sign my email list, and there's a direct relationship. And if they like what I do, that's it. You know, the record company can't go bankrupt. They can't drop me. They can't whatever. If if I, you know, people who are into music who are music lovers, I'll find them, and right. and that's the plan. Well, then here's the question: Since you've been in the music biz for for more than a decade now, in yeah. all these bands and doing all this, 
what happens in a band? I mean, pick one of the bands that you were in. Yeah. And you, maybe you got musical attention, you got mm-hmm. some videos done, and maybe yeah. MTV or MTV Canada Airplay, I don't know. Absolutely, yeah, that did happen. For so record. what goes wrong? Why doesn't it go to the next step where you become, like, was it the band just hanging each other after a while, or was it drugs, or just you, you all felt frustrated? I had all, all three things happen. Um... One of them was the band just hated each other. It exploded. The other one was we signed a record deal. Things were going great. We already had an independent success, meaning our video was getting played on Much Music, which is like MTV right. Canada. There was a big buzz. We signed a record label with a, a new label at the time, which is, I don't know if you know the Tragically Hip down, down here, but they're one of the biggest bands in Canada. Their manager started a label. It was looking good. It was really artist-friendly. We signed a deal. It was great. And then went bankrupt. Hmm. So... You see what I'm saying? It's it's difficult. And, you know, we had a, one of the first a real kind of biz bands that I was in, meaning that got attention from yeah, the music yeah. biz and whatever. Um, we went through the same thing. Big time manager in Canada. He managed Kim Mitchell and Holly Cole, which are big acts in Canada. Yeah. And and the same thing. He shopped this to labels in the States. And all of a sudden, there, there you know, there was a big buzz and nothing really ever came of it. And then you sort of lose momentum and people's heads get in the wrong space about I'm just trying to, com- you know, be committed to music and not worry too much about any of that stuff. You know what I'm saying? Right. So, is your that, so- go ahead. Yeah, is your solo work particularly different from what you were doing in the bands? Or was it the same kind of style? Uh, I'm a little older now. Like, I played in some some bands that were fairly heavy. Um, this, this is more singer-songwriter stuff, yeah. Because, I mean, you know, I got a bit older and I've always played this kind of stuff, but it makes more sense to do it now since I'm performing solo. Right. So, immediately... I mean, the arrangements of the songs, and musically, they might not be your typical song, singer-songwriter fair, but ultimately people react to it that way because it's just me and my guitar. Well, we have Rob Zabo and his guitar yeah. here with us on Dave's Gone By. Rob's going to play us a little something, I, I hope, Absolutely. acoustically. And, yeah. and which, what song do you want to do here? I, I want to do a song called Beautiful. That'd be beautiful. Nice segue. It's all about the segue. Never tell me that I'm beautiful anymore. You only treat me like a medical condition. You understand me like a metaphor. You're a student in a class. Will I get better in a year or two? Forgive me if I ask. Automatic, you vote for conversation. You ask me how I am, but keep to twenty words or less. Why ask? Product you consume, oh, it's true, and it happens every day. It does. You never tell me that I'm beautiful anymore. You only treat me like a medical condition. You understand me like. I get 
better in a year or two. Forgive me if I ask. 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 Thanks, Dave. This guy's good. This guy wow. is good. So Let me ask, what precipitated that song? Is it just something um, that you felt like writing because you you had this idea of being treated like, you know, badly by a partner, or was it more personal? Did it really grow out of feeling something within a, a real situation? It was. Uh, I think it was just uh, a cumulative effect of uh, having feeling like lots of friends were taking me for granted. But, but so it was based on. Oh, it's based on real life. Yeah, most of the stuff I write is just purely out of personal experience. Uh-huh. Just you know, and you get the feeling a certain way, and then you're writing the song. The funny thing is, you don't understand what it is until after the fact. You know, you're writing the song, you're kind of like in the middle, and it seems obvious to you, maybe listening to it even on first listen. But then I look back on it, you know, five years later, and go, "That's really obvious what I was going through at that <laughs> point. I was going through, you know, right. Johnny was mean to me, and my sister didn't like me anymore, and la 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 la. la you know what I mean? Whatever." happens to be at yeah, the time, yeah. right? Um, and is that what you do? You sit with the guitar and puzzle, I mean, words first, music first, both at the same time? It's all, all kinds of different ways. Usually it all just, like, to me, the, the stuff that I end up liking the most just comes out like, blah, blam, just like, and you don't even know where it comes from. It's, 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 it's cr- crazy. It's strange. I don't know how it works, really. And is it the typical songwriter thing where some songs, 20 minutes, you're done, and other songs, six months later, you yeah, do the chorus. Yeah. yeah, I'm the worst for that. Some of the stuff, I, I have songs sitting around for two years, and I just, like, slave away at them. Right. And other stuff is, like, blam, 20 minutes, and there you go. And some of the best stuff happens that way. Right. Yeah. Right. Um, well, let's do another. Okay. Sure. Um, I'll, I'll, I'll play another song. Uh, here we go. Sorry. I'm going to get my cable. Oh, it's capo time. Capo time. time. With Rob Sabo, by the way. S-Z-A-B-O. And uh, find out about his two albums, A Battery of Tests and uh, Late Bloomer, on robsabo.com as soon as he gets the server working. Changed my mind. Oh, you're not going to... Oh, the capo is on the table. Okay. You see that? Fickle musician. Yeah, but at least you're capable. Yeah. Right? Capo. Yeah, right. <laughs> Play a song. What's, what's this? This song? is the song. called Watching a Movie. It's uh, the first song on my last record. My eyes are floating high above me And I'm just looking down On some guy impersonating me on the ground I try to tell him, don't you do that, don't you go there, cause you'll regret it. Even though I know I'm wrong, I'm wrong, I'm wrong. I'm fighting infection, what you got? Oh, did I mention what I caught? I'm digging up leaks to find the plot. It's just like I'm watching a movie. And all I can say is... Like a spy, a cold and calculating me. I'm holding my beliefs so very close to me, even though I know I'm wrong, I might be wrong. I'm fighting infection, what you got? Oh, did I mention what I got? I'm digging up leaves to find the plot. It's just like I'm watching a movie.
watching a movie you're listening to the radio hearing him um, thanks also again for, for that song now in one, the song you played before you mentioned something about um, medical condition yes here this one is like fighting an infection are there certain <laughs> themes that, that show up in like a couple of your songs and you, you find them out and, and psychoanalysis like, I love yeah, it yeah um, or things that come out like Weird Al Yankovic and food right or have you ever noticed that or no like that? that's the first time anybody's ever said that that's that's really crazy that you would say that. I mean, that that shows you it's like when you're you're an artist, or you're a musician. It's like trying to read a piece of paper when it's like a millimeter away from your face, like right. because it's it's you. You don't know. That, that's funny that you would say that. Yeah, like I have lots of health problems. Like my stomach's really messed up, and I have to take all sorts of stuff for it. So maybe that psychologically is like manifests itself in the songwriting, right? Hmm. Um, actually, what else, what else is wrong with this? <laughs> now this gets interesting here. No, I'm else? really, really tall, and no, that's not real. No, yeah, I mean you're taller than, than I am, but that's not no, hard to do. The tall jokes are. Yeah. Are you your kids? Are you married? Are you no, I'm not. I'm single, or? and uh, uh, I have a girlfriend. Yay. And uh, I don't know. That's what we were talking about medical conditions, though, so that certainly doesn't fall into that category. Depends on the relationship, <laughs> but you know. <laughs> but seriously, you need, you need a but. Well, here's, here's right. the other thing, then. Uh, even though you're not settled down, as it were, uh, are, is it difficult to maintain a serious, steady relationship with someone when you're going to New York and you're touring, I assume, various pro- provinces of Canada? Or Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, I've done that throughout. See, I just came out of a period of the last band. I, I was telling you about the whole record deal thing. So I spent a lot of time around my hometown and my, you know, uh, area of influence and family and friends and whatever. So... I'm just embarking on the serious touring right. stage of the process again, so I guess that remains to be seen how how the relationship will do. I hope I hope well. I do have to ask then: uh, Are there Canadian groupies, and how are they different from American groupies? Are they skankier? Um, uh, do, is do they like a hockey? family show? Is this not a family show, Dave? No, this this show is rated DGB thirteen. The the Dave's Gone By equivalent of PG right. thirteen. So, so what words are available for uh, for us at this show? Not the George Carlin ones. <laughs> um, Bill Cosby, or we can get into like Seinfeld kind of territory. Oh, definitely Seinfeld. And I think even of the seven words you can say on television, we can probably do piss. Right. right. Okay. Skanky groupies. So what does that mean, really? I don't know. I was never really like a big groupie guy. Like, okay. to me, that's not really why I got... I'm really like kind of a boring guy in the sense that I'm pretty dedicated to music and kind of focused on that, and the other stuff is peripheral. So uh, to answer your question... Yeah. Um, <laughs> the Canadian <laughs> chicks... Yeah. Are wild. Oh, there you go. Uh, that, that's like another uh, program on this radio station. That that would be the answer there. But no. It's Did you like this, the 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 preamble though? Oh, the preamble was. So fun. now I'm totally safe. Now we're into the amendments. Of, yeah, yeah, it's good. It's um, what was I going to ask? Uh, let's see. But uh, growing up in Canada, how did you meet Soga? Now, so, well, actually, let me preface this because yeah, you can't point on the radio, Dave. Uh, he was just, Dave was just pantry. pointing over to Soda, who's a very dear friend of mine, and he's sitting in the corner of the, uh, the studio here with us. Now, folks who know this program know that Soda and his band won last November. Actually, it's a, it's a two-person folk outfit. We're on this program a few months back, and they did some music, and they talked a bit, and it was really cool. And then Soda contacted me a couple of months ago, it must be at this point, and said, hey, there, there's a couple of people you really ought to listen to, and they'll be coming to New York um, in a few months, and you should, really should have them on, give them a listen. And I did, and, and of course, one of the, those people is Rob Zabo. But again, how did you meet... Uh, Soda came up to see my former band, Plasticine, perform in Hamilton, Ontario, which is very near Toronto. Mm-hmm. And that's how we met. He, he came up, and he was totally into the band, and the next thing you know, after the show, we hung out, he came over to our place, we stayed up all night, the rest is history. Now we've, you know, kept in touch. Good for, yeah. He's been so nice as to let me sleep on his couch while I've been down here, and I'm eternally grateful. Is there a Canadian music scene? I mean, yes, of course there is, but is there, can you describe it? Is there a movement 
in Canadian music at this point or, or your kind of folkish area of it? Yeah, there seems to be a lot of like alt country going on. Hmm. A lot of the kind of Ryan Adams kind of vibe. Mm-hmm. That's that's pretty big in Canada right now. As far as uh, a real... I don't know. I think it, it apes a lot of the U.S., like the electro trash thing that was going on in New York and Germany and all of that. That was kind of big in Toronto for a while, but I think people are getting away from that. But okay. there's also lots of local scenes. Like, I was part of a scene in Kitchener-Waterloo, which is a small... It's like a suburb like Long Island would be, like a small city in Long Island would be to New York City, right? Cool. And we had a huge scene, meaning like where you would have local bands that were drawing five, 600 people to shows at big clubs in the early 90s, and there was like the kind of independent music explosion at that time. That's where a lot of bands that are still carry on to this day came from. And I don't know whether you guys had that kind of indie music explosion at that time, meaning in the early 90s, in the wake of like Nirvana and that kind of stuff, right? Well, it wasn't really coming out of New York at that point. I think that was out of the Midwest. Or Is I, that where I, it was coming from? Well, I know Nirvana yeah. was Seattle and all yeah, that, but right, I was talking about like the whole college yeah. radio indie so, you know, you get the... Uh, no, ours was, was like R.E.M. that era, a decade before that. Right. That's when we so got maybe that. that was... Yeah, I guess you've got the R.E.M.s and the Pixies and those kinds of right. bands, right? The, yeah. Um, who are you listening to now? Uh, who am I listening to? I'm listening to Soda's new band, oh, cool. um, His Mighty Robot. I just heard the new stuff. It's killing me. I, it's amazing. Cool. Uh, another band I'm listening to is a band called Metric from Toronto. They're really, really great. Their new album is amazing. It's, it's like... A, Ah, uh, I don't know, it's like an 80s throwback band, but with like real musicianship and really great songwriting and great poetry in the lyrics, and it's somewhat of a political bent. It's interesting. And uh, there's a singer-songwriter from New York City called Cheryl Warden. She performs under the name Arai, and I, I saw her really recently at the North by Northeast Festival in Toronto, mm-hmm. and she totally killed me. She is at, like, if you guys live in New York City and you haven't seen her, like, run to see her, she's, she's an opera-trained singer, but she plays music that's really artsy and really it's really brave to be able to play this kind of music in in uh, in public. I think I, that, that, <laughs> well, just because it doesn't have like Wildman Fisher. No. Well, no, it's, it it doesn't have any of the trappings of like a cult of personality or like pop structure. It's totally guttural and totally it's like got like a Jeff Buckley. The Amanda Dallas kind yeah, of... Okay. Yeah, that's, that's funny. That's exactly how I was describing it to Soda this morning, with, like, the Amanda Gallus meets Jeff Bugley. Without the, like, the Amanda Gallus gets really, like, kind of evil at points and, like, almost scary, which is, obviously, that's great. And it's, mm-hmm. but Buckley she, got kind of scary, too. Yeah, yeah but this, that's what yeah. it means. So, uh, Shara seems to get, like, take you to places where you're kind of scared to go, but she's kind of fearless that way. I don't know her that well or anything. I mean, no, never, I actually, but the, I'm really inspired by what she does. Um, have a radio question for you. Now, this was either rumor or legend or truth that we always heard about uh, Canadian radio. Was there something called, that, or that was nicknamed the Leonard Cohen Law, where, like, every hour, Canadian radio had to... Pr- what, what, what? And what, watch the, that word. Leonard Cohen. Oh, yeah, I know. I almost yeah. let that go <laughs> on, on the... Uh, that's not... That's one of the George Carlin ones. Yeah. That's the worst George Carlin. Was it true or is it true? Leonard Cohen? No, there was a law about Canadian content. What's that? And that, that's that Canadian radio stations have to play a certain percentage of Canadian artists that are, it's, it's, it's uh, MAPL, which means the music has to be Canadian, the writer has to be Canadian, the producer, the lyricist, and yeah, it's got to satisfy this, this quality, all, like, all those things yeah. is in order to be considered Canadian. And then once it's considered Canadian, you have to play 20% or whatever the percentage is of your total content, Canadian music per hour or per per day or per whatever. Oh, my gosh. Yeah. You're surprised you're, you're, you're flabbergasted at that. They don't no, have anything like that. Weird, no, we, we, we certainly, I mean, we have God knows regimented and awful playlists in, right. uh, in American radio. But, um, you know, certainly not that kind of, I guess, what would be a homogeneity or, I mean, I, in a way it is good. I, it, I'll tell you what, this is, the, this is my thinking about it. It's, it's the idea was good in the sense that I think people were thinking here we are this tiny fish beside the hugest whale in the world and we're going to get swallowed up and our culture is going to get swallowed up if we don't do something to try and implement that. But I think that the way it works in practice is it it kind of glorifies mediocrity because what you end up doing is playing Canadian acts just because they're Canadian, right. not because they deserve to be there alongside other international acts. Because truth be told. 
Canadian acts dominate the world stage. Like, I mean, you name any... There's certainly no shortage of Canadian yeah. acts out Although there. they all moved to California. For yeah, 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 it's but, funny. Well, yeah. But you, you know what I'm saying? So, yeah, I agree with you. I, I don't think, I mean... But the is the law still extant, or...? Yeah, it's still... A, it's like, still I remember extant. Brian Adams Brian fighting... with a B, not Ryan Adams. No, yeah, Brian with a B, fighting against it because he wasn't considered Canadian under those rules. <laughs> because he was using an American producer, he was co-writing with someone who was American, I think... And you know what I mean? And next, next thing you know, he wasn't technically considered Canadian, so he thought that was a ridiculous thing. Yeah. But it was probably just because he wanted to get you know, more, more, more spin. <laughs> the 40% that was left for everybody yeah, else right. wasn't enough for him. I mean, right, the right. 20% geared for Canadians. Anyway, that's an interesting topic. You'll, you'll get, if you talk to musicians north of the border, you'll get lots of different uh, opinions. Cool. Well, I'm, we've gotten lots of different music, both from your CDs and from live. I want you to close out with one more live tune, if you don't mind. But one I want to remind live, people... Yeah. The, the learn when his website is operational more about <laughs> Rob Zabo at uh, Rob Zabo is, is that let's see what's the nationality on that that's that, Hungarian so on all sides or well just the, the name is Hungarian it, it means tailor it's very common in Hungary everyone's called Rob Zabo wait no everyone's called Zabo not Rob Zabo or <laughs> no meaning you'd like it's, it's like saying Joe Blow or John is Smith or something cool Rob Zabo is like no big deal right oh I, I did not know that yeah cool um yeah, Lepkowitz is somewhat surprisingly common. It's also got Hungarian roots. Oh, does it so really? I didn't know that. Yeah. That's my name, by the way. Lepkowitz. Yeah, yeah, I knew that. That's, so, but it's not S-Z at Lepkowitz. the end. What? Sorry? It's not S-Z, S-Z rather, at the end. It's just no, it's Z. Z but right. who knows what it was before Ellis Island. It was called right. Lepkowitz. All oh, right, right, right. Um, anyway, how do we get on that? With two CDs from Rob Sabo, uh, a battery of tests. And, by the way, they're both available from your website? Absolutely. Or the usual, also Amazon, CD Baby, that kind of thing, or not? Uh, no, just through my website and some Canadian online retailers. And will you be touring America or Northeast again in the next month? I plan month to or? do this uh, every couple months for the rest of my life. <laughs> God willing, and, and yeah, yeah, exactly. it's good music too. But the other, the name of the other CD is called Late Bloomer. It has a, a, a happy side and a dark side, an electric side, acoustic side, however yeah. you want to put it. So, Rob Zabo, first of all, thank you so much for visiting the neighborhood. What are we going out with? This song's called Incandescent. Thanks so much for having me, Dave. It's been a pleasure. You're welcome, eh? <laughs> Would you burn me a candle? Will you sing on your way back home? Will you save me a mouthful? If not, would you leave me a note? Will you comb my hair when my head is full of knots? Will you tell me you're scared when you're ready? No way I would take the replacement on the way There's no one to replace I'm okay I'll do just fine alone I'll do just fine Just fine out there I'll do just fine I'm scared I just wrote you a page full On both sides of the full scap notes Just a week in the mail If not, I'll just wait till you call I can make us a meal And then eat half all alone Save the rest for the week You could read it There's no way I would take The replacement on the way There's no one to replace I'm okay I'll do 
just fine alone. I'll do just fine. I hope you'll do just fine out there. I'll do just fine. I'm scared. I can't remember what you look like anyway. And I can't remember what we felt like anyway. And I can't remember what you look like anyway. And I can't remember what I feel like.